everyone. Aaron here from Finkton Languages. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Pimsleur and TyPod 101, or more generally, LanguagePod 101, um, which are two language learning resources that I have used um, pretty successfully. I uh, have quite a bit of experience with both of them, and they both have their positives and negatives, but I would definitely say um, I have had a lot better experience with uh, Pimsleur. Um, and TyPod 101 is, you know, it's fine. Um, but the problem that I find with it is that um, it doesn't exploit uh, a certain aspect of language learning that I think is really essential for for learning new languages. Um, and it's something that Pimsleur does really well. Uh, but before I get into that, I just want to um, say a big shout out to those who have supported my channel on Patreon. So that's Hillary, Nathan, Mark, Ian, Susan, Taylor, JP, Brendan, Ryan, and Joltrest. Thank you guys so much for your continued support and past support of my channel. If you are interested in uh, supporting my YouTube channel, you can just go here to Patreon, uh, patreon.com backslash Finkdom. Actually, the link is in the description of this video. Um, and I just have different tiers here that you can sign up for depending on what you're interested. If you uh, want like weekly private lessons with me, um, you know, there's an option for that. If you just want to be part of the group discussion, there's an option for that. The one I really want to draw your attention to, though, is um, this monthly group chat. We just did a group chat uh, earlier this week with the patrons on um, over Google Meet. And it's just a video call. It's just a hangout and we discuss what languages we're learning. We discuss how we're learning them, uh, things that are that are hard and things that are um, that could be doing better. And, you know, we just chat and help each other. And, um, you know, I recommended a few different resources to uh, to the, the other people that were joining in this video chat. Uh, and that was for the November group chat. We're going to be doing another one coming up here in December. So if that's interesting to you, um, just go ahead and sign up on the uh, Patreon page. Anyways, let's talk about uh, Pimsleur and TyPod 101. Ah, hold on, before we get any further... Uh, Moon, Moonlit Spud says, problem with Pimsleur is I tried it in my Thai learning journey, is it basically took many hours to teach me how a traveling businessman chats up a woman. I mean, the, Pimsleur, I, I think Pimsleur is great. Okay, don't sell them short. Um, it can get repetitive and it is geared towards like a traveling businessman rather than for example, I don't know, uh, a student studying abroad or something like that. Um, it, do, it definitely has its limitations, though, and we will be discussing that for sure. By the way, I'm not using my my language learning mug today. It's this uh, Frosty the Snowman mug. Miriam Duke says, hello, my husband and I are going to start Pimsleur accounts in January. He's learning Spanish and I'm going to learn Portuguese, which shouldn't be too difficult since I already speak Portuguese or speak Spanish fluently. Yeah, that's awesome. Oops, I just realized my door is open and people are coming over. Um, yeah, I find uh, Pimsleur to be really helpful and I've never actually subscribed to their account with like the app and all the extra features and stuff. Um, but I would love to hear the experiences of anyone who has done that. Um, Stream says the way I see it, language pod 101 feels like phrase books read aloud. Yeah, that's and that's what we're gonna talk about. That's my main complaint. That's like actually a very good description of, of language pod 101. There they do some things well. Um is it enough to warrant like a monthly subscription? I don't know. You'll have to decide that for yourself. Um let me just share my screen with you again. I'll show you a little bit what I mean. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, I just shared it. Okay. So here is TyPod 101. Um, I have been using it. Uh, and of course, TyPod 101. Hold on, let me just go to uh, LanguagePod 101. 
So the first thing is they have a lot of languages offered. And I'm very often skeptical of anything that uh, has this many languages because uh, language learning really isn't a one size fits all thing. And I want to learn a language through some, some resource that is specific for my language. I will say to their credit, language pod 101, um, they do their, uh, their main podcasts specific to your language. So how to greet someone in perfect tie. Um, you know, did you really just ask my age? That is like a, a concept. That's a, uh, a cultural thing in Thai. Here's one about the weather in Thailand. Um, here's a one specifically about the strange ways that you tell time in Thailand. Uh, uh, yeah, like here's a, a podcast about the Bangkok's Grand Palace. All right, this the Thai Pod 101 is specifically designed to teach you Thai and not any other language. So I give them credit for that. Um, you don't have to worry about uh, like other like other language learning resources like maybe Bluebird languages um, seems very cookie cutter and you can't do that with languages because they're just so different. But Thai Pod 101 does a good job of that. Pimsleur does too. Um, my problem with this is that you see here, this is the, the um, absolute beginner course, right? And there's 50 lessons, 50 podcasts in this absolute beginner course, and they go one after another. But if you take a look here, these podcasts are not at all related to each other, okay? Are you lost in Thailand? Uh, want to know the places you have visited in Thailand? Want to stay in a Thai guest house? Uh, this Thai hotel room is too small. How can a t-shirt be too expensive in Thailand? Have you seen the Grand Palace? Getting your photo taken in, in Thailand. Okay, um, they don't tend to build off each other very well. And this is something that I want, this is the, really the main point of this live stream that I want you guys to take out of it. Language learning is not just a process of learning. It is a cyclical process of learning and forgetting, learning and forgetting, okay? So whereas, in Thai Pod 101, they might teach you, um, you know, they'll teach you some nouns and verbs in lesson 27 about, you know, how to get a bigger hotel room, right? Or, you know, about checking into a hotel and talking to the clerk and stuff like that. All right. And that's fine. That seems like some very useful stuff. But then they will never, after they teach you those vocabulary words, they don't come back to them. All right. It's like they think, well, we already taught you the vocabulary words for hotel rooms. So why would we need to come back to it? Well, no, that's not how language learning works. All right. When you're learning a language, you learn the word and then you forget it. <laughs> um, and, and that's just part of the process. You have to embrace that part of the process. Um, Pimsleur does that very well. Language Pod 101 doesn't. Um, Moonlit Spud says, I've recently started using Glossica, which for me is a much better version of the repeat these sentences drills. Much more varied and sounds way more authentic. Okay, I've used Glossica. Um, the problem for me with Glossica, I don't have a ton of experience. So if you had a different experience than me, uh, you know, please let me know. The problem with Glossica is they use very canned phrases that are not related to each other. I'm literally just sitting there all day saying, you're lazy. I found the green one. He wants to take the bus. And learning all those phrases is fine and it's good. And they do a good job of repeating those to you. They don't expect you to just hear the phrase one time and remember it. You know, so Glossica does have that spaced repetition thing, right? Like they, they, um, you, you read the word, you hear the word, and then you come back to it later before you forget or when you would be about to forget. 
my problem with them is that it's just so all just so disjointed and it doesn't hold my interest the way that um, Pimsler does. Pimsler brings you through a conversation with another person with a, you know, an imaginary person. Um, and it's not necessarily fascinating conversations, but it's a whole lot more interesting to me personally than just disjointed sentences that don't connect to each other. Okay. Um, Moonlit Spud says, I actually like that non-relation as it prepares my brain to hear anything in the target language rather than already knowing the topic. But I'm going to push back on you a little bit on that. Being able to understand what's being said based off of already having knowledge of the topic, that's an essential skill of language learning. Okay, It's really important to be able to develop that. Uh, being able to guess what the person is saying without having understood every single word because you already know the context. To me, that's really important to be able to do that. Um, uh, Rastislav says, I hate forgetting. Yeah, we all do, right? Unfortunately, there's just no way around it, though. Okay, also, Type 101 has way too much English for my liking, but it is handy to use as mine for an Anki deck. I do agree with that. So let me show you this again. Um, so, all right. Let's say you go into a, a Type Pod 101 uh, lesson and you, you just click the podcast and play it. Um, is this like a, let me see, where's the, uh, here's the lesson transcript. I definitely agree that they use way too much English in their in their um, lessons. All right, so like here's two people, like the two hosts of the podcast discussing Thai in English. I don't want to hear people discussing Thai in English, right? I want to hear people speaking Thai, or I at least wants to be reading Thai. You know, they have some Thai words in here, but it's mostly the two hosts speaking in English. Okay, um, now. I do appreciate the beginning of their podcasts when they actually have something that's entirely in Thai. And, you know, I think they do a pretty good job at the beginning of their podcasts. Like the first two to three minutes of a Tide Pod 101 podcast or any language pod, whether it's Spanish Pod 101, Romanian Pod 101, whatever. My experience is mostly with, with Tide Pod 101. Tide Pod became a very unfortunate name several years ago after the Tide Pod challenge, but... I digress. They do a good job of the the opening like three or four minutes tops of their podcasts, where first they they play a conversation in Thai, and you listen to that, right? You listen to the characters speaking back and forth. You might not understand everything, but then they do another version where the characters are speaking very slowly, and to me, that's quite valuable. Um, because I didn't understand everything they said in their conversation when they were speaking quickly. I understand most of what they say when they are speaking slowly to each other. And I get to hear the specific words. Um, you, you know, I catch a lot of stuff that I didn't catch in the faster casual speed uh, conversation. And then they, uh, then they do the same conversation one more time, this time with English translations, which is fine because then I get everything. I understand the whole thing, um, even the stuff that I didn't catch in the slow translation. And that's the first two to three minutes of the Language Pod 101 episode, okay? And they do that well. The problem is the last... 90% of the episode where they speak so much English and it's like, I see what they're trying to do. They're, they're trying to teach you a little bit of grammar. They're trying to teach you a little bit about the culture of the place that you're learning their language. But my thing is I moved to Thailand. I lived in Thailand. Almost everyone who's learning Thai is learning Thai because they're going to Thailand. I don't need you to teach me about landmarks and and tourist attractions in Thailand, I want to learn the language. Okay. And I don't need you to, I don't 
it's not valuable for me to hear you speak English. I want to hear you speaking Thai. Okay, so that's Thai Pod 101. Some positives, some negatives. Um, overall, not my favorite. They do have one thing that I quite like. Um, one thing that I am, that makes me, there's one part of the app that makes me still subscribe to them, and that's their extensive reading uh, books, essentially. Okay. Um, not perfect, but to me, it's more valuable than their podcasts. All right. And let me just show you. I know I've, I've shown this on the website, on the on this channel before. So, uh, for example, um, there there's um, here's a book called where things come from in Thai. I forget the name in Thai. It's called Tima Kong Si Dang Dang. All right. And you can see that it's about, well, it's a, it's about, it is about clothes and stuff like that, but we'll watch, you know? Um, so you go through and there's a lot of pictures uh, and you can you can see what you're reading about. Maybe this one isn't the best example, but it's saying like here it's saying windows are made of glass, right? And then it says glass is made out of sand. Clothes some clothes is made out of plants. Some clothes is made from animals, right? And so you can see exactly what you're reading. Here it says some clothes is made from animals. And then it gives you your little vocabulary words up here next to, uh, you know, next to the picture that represents it. Cars are made out of metal. Metal comes out of the ground. Okay. Um, it doesn't leave me guessing what's going on. I mean, I do have to know to some extent, I have to know uh, what is happening in the story. Uh, I have to be able to understand some of the words, but um, it, the the pictures are just a help. Okay, so that's the one thing uh, that I really do like about Thai Pod 101 or Language Pod 101 in general is what they call the extensive reading. Now they call it extensive reading. I actually call that intensive reading. Ah, hello, Joltrest. Saluton. Um, yeah, Moonlit Spud says, I agree those intros are great, and I love the way they put stuff above your level in there. Yeah, the intros, I think, are uh, the best part of the Thai Pod 101 podcasts. Moonlit said, Spud says, uh, funny how it's different for different people. I found Pimsleur a chore, but can happily burn through 30 minutes of Glossy Cup per day. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. I am definitely the opposite. Okay, let me just go through a few more of these. Um, where does finishing all level five, all five levels of Pimsleur get you? Are you asking me for like a, a level, like a surf level? Um, if you finish all five levels of Pimsleur, if that's all you did, you're still not going to be able to have a conversation with people. Not really. You can, you'll have some like, phrases you'll have you'll have a decent number of phrases and um you know, verbs and nouns and, and and words that you'll need after you finish all five levels of pimsleur but you need other things i'm not here suggesting that pimsleur is should be your main source of language learning okay if you're going to be using pimsleur you should be practicing with you should be practicing what you learn in Pimsleur with real people. Uh, hello, Hillary. Thanks for joining. Um, so Pimsleur is great. I recommend Pimsleur. Um, I don't think it's the end all be all of language learning. Okay. So when you ask how far will Pimsleur get you, Pimsleur won't get you very far by itself. You need other stuff. Okay. Uh, a few weeks ago, I did a, a, a video, a live stream about what I call the, the three pillars of language learning, vocabulary acquisition, comprehensible input, and conversation practice. Um, I would say Pimsleur offers you a bit of comprehensible input and a bit of vocabulary acquisition. Moderate. 
And it's sort of like a fake faux version of conversation practice. It's not really though. Um, it sort of simulates that without being really a conversation practice. Um, but if you're gonna learn a language, you need to do all three of those things, all right? Pimsleur can be a help in that. Um, but you, you won't get there without doing those other things. Pimsleur itself isn't the key. Sorry for beating a dead horse. My wife, my wife always tells me I explain things too much. Like I think people are idiots. I don't try to, <laughs> that's not what I think actually. I just, um, maybe I underestimate my own ability to explain stuff. So I over explain. All right, Joel Trest says, I was completely out off Pimsleur by their hard sell. They lost me as a customer several years ago. Yeah, um, uh, that actually brings me to a good uh, a good segue. I showed you a little bit of stuff um, with PyTypod 101. Let me show you some stuff here now with Pimsleur. So here's the Pimsleur website. Um, you know, you get a seven day free trial. You can also get their first lesson for free. The first lesson, whatever you're, you're learning just to see if you've never tried Pimsleur before, try the first lesson, you know, it's free. Well, you got to put in your country and stuff, but, um, try the first lesson, see if you like it. Um, I guess even if you don't like it, I still recommend it because, you know, give, give it a little bit more of a, of a chance than just one lesson. But, um, so let's take a look at their Spanish. All right, here they have Pimsleur Premium for $19 a month. Now, $19 a month isn't that much um, in the grand scheme of things. I think Pimsleur is a pretty solid, good language learning resource, okay? Um, you know, I it wouldn't be out of the question to spend, you know, $80 a month or $100 a month on language lessons with a tutor, right? And that's probably doing one lesson a week. Um, so $19 a month is pretty good. And then you can use Pimsleur every single day uh, rather than one lesson a week, which you would be spending significantly more than this. So I don't think $19 a month is, uh, that's not unreasonable for a good language learning resource, okay? Um, and you get all this stuff, um, I've actually never used their premium, okay? So what I've used is uh, the Pimsleur, well, I have used the Pimsleur reading lessons. Okay, immediate access to all lessons. That's what I'm looking for in here. Okay, it has other stuff like flashcards and easy as you learn skill. You know, you can practice skills after the lesson. Uh, you get little quizzes and stuff like that. Okay, fine, I've never actually tried this, but I. I don't think any of that would really be bad. The important thing that I want in here is the immediate access to all lessons. That's what I want. All right, click down here at uh, Pimsleur Audio. You can see here that for $15 a month, you get the lessons, all right? And all this other stuff is just, you know, driving mode in the car. Uh, you can listen to it on Amazon Echo. You can listen, listen to it on tablets or whatever. All right, what you get is the lessons, the audio lessons. That's to me is the important part. So for $15, is that better than $19 of getting all this extra stuff? I don't know. I mean, if, if the five extra dollars, uh, you're basically paying for flashcards and things like that. Um, so I don't know, that's up to you. It's five bucks. I don't think five bucks is gonna kill you. I also don't think it's really necessary. What I'm doing with Pimsleur is getting practice pronouncing words, all right? And I'm gonna hear a native speaker pronounce words, right? And um, it's like a, a practice conversation. So the native speaker says something and then I repeat it after them, trying to sound exactly like them. Uh, you know, and it's an important thing in language learning because languages have strange sounds, okay? If you're a native speaker of English and you are uh, trying to learn French, you have to learn the e, you have to learn the uh, 
you have to learn the e uh, and the on uh, and uh, and eh, right? You have all these other vowels and e uh, that we don't have in English. And being able to hear that a lot, that's going to be some input, okay? You're going to be hearing them. You're going to be practicing, trying to sound exactly like them. That's muscle memory with your tongue, your mouth, your throat, uh, your, you know, your, your velum, and, and you're practicing uh, producing nasal sounds and things like that. Um, and, and the nice thing is you can do that in private without anyone listening, right? I, <laughs> gosh. So when I was in college, I was taking a phonology class and we had to identify the IPA, all the different speech sounds that exist in hu human language. We had to basically learn all of them, not learn to produce them necessarily, but we had to learn to at least identify all of, all of the words in human language, all of the uh, sounds in human language. Um, and I also wanted to learn how to produce them. And I was learning French at the time. So I was trying to figure out how to do a, a uvular trill, which is like it if it's what it if Piaf does in the song when she says, Non, rien de rien, non, je ne regrette rien. I can't really do it there. You probably know the song. Um, you might not have recognized it with my terrible singing. Anyways, I go to the I go to the bathroom after class because I was trying to figure out how to do a uvular trill. And I'm looking in the mirror, trying to look at my uvula in the back. And I, I'm literally ah, looking in the mirror, trying to see my uvula move. Um, and it was uh, pretty embarrassing because someone walked in and, and saw me doing that. <laughs> um, anyways, that was just a story. Um, but with Pimsleur, you don't have to worry about that. You can do Pimsleur in private. Right, you don't have to be having a conversation with someone and messing around with all of these strange sounds that exist in the language. Um, you can do it just in your car or in your bedroom or while no one else is around. Okay, so I I think Pimsleur is really useful for pronunciation practice, um, and it's also useful for learning. Uh, different, it helps with syntax, okay? You're going to be repeating lots of phrases that, that give you good examples of how the language is formed, okay? And I think that getting lots of example sentences is way more useful than having someone teach you an explanation of how to form sentences, okay? They can tell you I before E except after C, well, that's a spelling rule, but you know they can tell you all the rules about um, adjectives come before nouns in this language, or adjectives come after the noun in this language. All right, and they can tell you that, but you're not going to internalize it until you get lots of examples and practice speaking those. Practice, you know, you hear a lot of examples, and you also practice producing lots of them, and then after a while, it just becomes very natural to say. Um, el gato negro instead of el negro gato, which would be a mistake in Spanish. Hillary says, uh, yo, I started learning Japanese with uh, Pimsleur CDs that I listened to in the car when I was younger. It helped with my speaking a lot in the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, one of the nice things is that Pimsleur doesn't use any writing at all. And I guess that can be a, a nice thing or a downfall, depending on the way you look at it. I see it as a good thing because you're not allowing spelling to get in the way. And also with uh, languages that have very difficult writing systems, you don't need to learn all of the words right away um, before you jump into a, a conversation, which very often should come first, in my opinion. Moonless Bud says, we are not spoiled for choice in Thai resources, sadly. So it's important to try pretty much everything out. I agree 100%. When learning Thai, it, we don't have a whole lot. We have Thai Pod 101, Glossica. We have one Pimsleur course. Um, there's really no good books for learning Thai. There's like some textbooks, but that ain't going to cut it, unfortunately. Um, what I really would love, oh, let me show you guys this thing. This is totally unrelated, but I just found it yesterday. Uh, what's it called? Um, 
by uh oh shoot i forget what it's called okay pride bridge let me see if i can find it here really quick Diglot, that's what it's called Diglot. um i just ordered this book yesterday never actually heard of it before yesterday but i saw this and i immediately liked it so read uh Learn French with Pride and Prejudice, a Diglot story. So what they do is they start, you start reading the book in English. You're just going to read Pride and Prejudice, okay? Uh, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man uh, in possession of great fortune must be in want of a wife, all right? And then they start weaving in French words. So um, this truth is so well established in the minds of the famille, you know, I'm I'm making this up. I haven't actually read the work, the the book yet. But they start weaving in French words little by little. So you're still reading a English story, but you're getting exposure to some French words. And then little by little, they start to add in more and more until you're reading French. Um, like I said, haven't tried this, uh, but I did just order it yesterday. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess I'll give you guys a an idea of um, of what that's like after I give it a shot. I think I'm going to use it to help my wife because she really likes Jane Austen. All right. Anyways, that's what I would love to have in, in Thai. Something that makes it easy for me to read in Thai. I would, I would, yeah, I would definitely want that. But we are kind of starved for good language learning resources for Thai. And, and I agree. I do try pretty much everything. Okay. Where are we going? Okay. Um, Trium says, I think it could be a result of different psychology and preferences, which explains how there are many different courses that are financially viable and have lots of fans who swear by them. Yeah, it's true. Um, one of the problems is, though, that, yeah, everyone has different learning styles. And you have to be sort of flexible, um, especially as a teacher. I have lots of students who have different needs. And when I'm teaching Spanish or French or English, I just have to be uh, kind of cognizant of those different needs because everyone is different. We all do learn a little differently. Okay, But there are some principles that just hold true. Okay, And it is simply true. It is just a fact that conversation practice and comprehensible input will do way more for your language learning than studying grammar rules. A grammar explanation will not make you fluent in a language. Okay, now of course there is some room to balance them out, right? I'm not saying you can never have someone explain a grammar rule to you. You can. That's fine. Um, take a class. Take a look through a textbook. I'm not saying don't do that. What I'm saying is if you're going to learn a language, then it will not be through those things. It will be through practicing the language with people and taking in input. That's what you need to do. Okay. Uh, a grammar explanation can help. It can help you notice things. Uh, it can be a good supplement to language practice, to conversation practice and comprehensible input. Yeah, it can. Okay. Um, so yes, we all learn differently. Some people have different strengths and weaknesses than other people. But there are some things that are just bad systems. I've had students before who all they wanted was for me to just teach them grammar rules. They wanted me to explain to them why the language works the way that it does. And they wanted me to explain to them how they can use certain words correctly. And that's okay. I, I do try to give explanations to some extent. But if you're paying me for a lesson, what you should be really trying to get out of that is time practicing the language, um, help looking for, uh, 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 help finding what you should be doing during the week 
Okay. That's why, you know, I, I, a lot of my lessons, I revolve around uh, TV shows. Okay. Like I will send someone a TV show in Spanish and I'll say, watch this show in Spanish this week, watch it every day. Okay. And then we'll discuss it and we'll use the words that you learned during the TV show to get some of that repetition in. Okay. And if you have a question about a word that you learned in the TV show, yeah, then I'll answer it. Maybe I'll explain some of the stuff, but it's not really worth your time to pay me to just teach you grammar rules. Okay. Um, it just won't be an effective way of learning the language. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Um, but, but I know I'm missing a lot of comments here. Rostislav says, I love your pronunciation. It's really good to understand. I don't know why, but I understand the American accent better than British, although I've never been to the USA and Britain. Yeah, I don't know. Um, don't know why that would be. Okay. Uh, Shrim says, I find Pimsleur can be too American-centric for my case in terms of content and pricing. Uh, feels more expenses uh, here, uh, which can be annoying as someone living in Singapore. Um, there are... Yeah, there are definitely, Pimsleur can be expensive for sure. Uh, let me show you a few things that I've done before though. So, you know, $19 a month ain't too bad. Um, $14 a month, $15 a month. I think that's better, even though you get less stuff, you still get the most important part, the lessons, the audio lessons, okay? So not, not, you know, not too bad. Um, let's take a look at their CDs. This is the ridiculous part. All right. Uh, five CDs for $1,200. No, definitely not. Okay. No way in hell. All right. $50 for 16 CDs. Um, I'm sorry, eight CDs. No, I still don't want to do that. That's pricey. Um, not quite as bad, but that's that's just pricey. Okay, um, it is expensive uh, unless you buy it on eBay. Okay, here's five uh, five volumes. So that's what there's thirty lessons per volume. So that's one hundred and fifty lessons. Okay, uh, half an hour each. So. 75 hours worth of lessons for a hundred bucks. That's worth it. That's why I buy a lot of my stuff on eBay. Okay. Another one you can do is Audible. Okay. Um, uh, on Audible, you can buy uh, five lessons at a time for $15 or for one credit. Okay. $15. Uh, that's Three dollars a lesson, not too bad. Okay, you're getting three three hours worth of language learning for fifteen bucks. Um, I also I usually listen to. I'd say I listen to most uh, most episodes in here, especially if I'm brand new learning the language. I'll often listen to an episode twice. Okay, we'll say on average I probably do that for every other one. So I'm actually getting you know, four and a half, five hours of language learning for 15 bucks. Uh, that's not too bad. And it's high quality. Okay. Um, but again, if you can, uh, I often buy Pimsleur over, over eBay and I find that to be a great value. And then on the plus side, if you use eBay a lot, then once you finish with it, you can sell it on eBay and get some of your money back. So that's, you know, you could be getting all the Pimsleur CDs for free. Um, so yeah, so different ways of getting Pimsleur. That's Type Hop 101. Um, if you can get your hands on Pimsleur, it's definitely worth it. Okay. This monthly, so th the buying the CDs from Pimsleur is just absolutely ridiculous. I would never suggest buying that. And I never have. Um, subscribing to Pimsleur Premium. That doesn't sound like a scam to me. That sounds pretty reasonable. $14 a month is not too bad. For a solid, a good solid language learning program, $14 a month is a good deal. 
So that's my opinion on that as far as pricing goes. Okay, Mike says, the extra $5 is totally worth it. I can't always immediately understand what I'm hearing, and the visual aid really helps with that. Plus, the flashcards help reinforce what you just learned. All right. Again, like I said, um, I've never used the premium features of Pimsleur. I'm sure the... Uh, I'm sure the the flashcards and the the visual aids um, probably will be helpful to some extent if you use them. Uh, I am the kind of person where I would probably not, but I know from experience that I do listen to the the audio, the, the the lessons, the episodes, and they're helpful. <laughs> Dakota, I, so I tweeted out a few weeks ago. I said, if you had $500 to spend on language learning, what would you buy? And Dakota Abroad uh, sent a, left me a comment and said, no idea what I would buy, but I would stop using it after three weeks. And I thought that is so true to, to, to an extent. Ah, Hillary, um, Hillary said... He's bought the same book in Spanish, the Pride and Prejudice book. Have you, um, do you like it? Have you read the book in Spanish? I'm interested to hear. I've never, I don't, I literally just found this book yesterday, the, uh, the Diglot uh, Pride and Prejudice. And I just thought that found, sounded fascinating. So I bought it right away, but, um, I'd be interested to hear someone. Uh, Joel Trust says, what do you mean? Can me estas crocodile? Um, yes, ni ne crocodilo, ne crocodilo, chitia. Fact it, ne, ni crac, ni crocodilas, multe, chitia. Okay. Uh, Dan says, I wonder if you can say Sao Paulo like us Brazilians say Sao. Is that how you say it? Like Sao? I don't know. I can pronounce all the French sounds. The intonation, though, the sentences in French stir a little higher, but not too high. Yeah, I mean, Pimsleur would be very helpful then for sounding like a native speaker. I, I find that to be very helpful because you hear them speak, then you repeat. You hear it, you repeat. Um, and then sooner or later, you just start to pick up on the little nuances of what they do with their tone of voice and stuff like that. All right. Someone says, I love the corpus and uh, and the long man reading of the sentence. I hope we can find out corpus audio when we learn other languages. Not sure which corpus you're talking about. Ah, Moonlit Spud says, I'm hoping that Link gets Thai in their next update. 100%. I am absolutely with you there. I love Link. I would really love it if Link had Thai as well. Um... I think it'd be a little bit tough with Thai just because Thai words don't have spaces between them. So it's a little, probably a little hard to, you know, <clears throat> um, find the space in between them, um, find where the one word ends and where one word stops. Uh, but if they can do it, I would absolutely be on board with that. I'm a big fan of Link. Um, you know, and if anyone from Link is watching, if you put Thai, uh, if you get a Thai version of Link, I will be using it a lot more and promoting it on my channel. So there's a little, I don't know if that's motivation enough. <laughs> but anyways, um, Thurim says, ideally what I would like is a course that gets also weave in real, that weaves in real native content, but getting copyrights could be difficult. Yeah. The beautiful thing about copyright is that it expires. So that's why they chose uh, Pride and Prejudice and Sherlock Holmes, things, you know, old stories. All right, Tom says, I'd rather learn how to pronounce words in French than Danish. Never learned Danish, so I, I can't speak too much of that. Okay. Um, Joel Dress says, I am talking about Pimsleur Preweb. Ah, yeah. I, f I felt like they'd got me into a bait and switch, but to be fair, they're probably a different company now. I forget where I read it, 
but someone says your brain is a pattern recognition machine. It's so true. You do learn more natural, naturally uh, hearing sentence pattern strings. Yeah, 100%. I, I like to uh, expose myself to a lot of different ways that sentences are being formed. In fact, by the way, I'm about to release a, a book, um, a, another language learning book, uh, hopefully within uh, two weeks. I'm trying to get it out before Christmas. Um, and it's just another story where you read something in your target language. And then, um, you know, it's very simple, kind of like the, uh, you know, I wrote this book, The Little Dragon. It's in different languages. El Dragoncito, right? Um, I think this one was a little bit too, it looks childish. So it wasn't very interesting to adults. Um, what I did was, you know, I, I put in some sentences like, um, uh, Luis aprendió que le encantaba comer manzanas. And then later on, I have a question, which more or less rephrases the sentence. Um, ¿Qué aprendió Luis de sí mismo? Uh, and then, Luis aprendió que le encantaba comer manzanas. Right? So it's asking, it's asking the same thing. Uh, Luis learns that he likes to eat apples. What did Luis learn? Luis learns that he likes to eat apples, right? It's putting it in a question form. Um, so you're, and you're getting three repetitions of the word learn. You're getting repetition, three repetitions of the word apple or two, I guess. Um, and you're seeing this word and you're seeing how sentence structures work in different contexts, not just in declarative sentences, but, you know, in, in questions and in responses. And uh, you're also getting negatives, right? Because sometimes the answer to the question is no. Um, excuse me, I just had to adjust my chair. So I, I think that's very valuable. It, you're right, our, our brains are pattern recognition machines. When we see a certain pattern, a certain amount of times, that's a lot better than if someone just explains to us how the pattern works. Moonlit Spuds says, Link has hinted that Thai might be coming after the 5.0 update, uh, which has been delayed for nearly a year. I'd sign up immediately. Yeah, again, 100% agreed. I think Link is great. I would absolutely use them a lot. I do use Link for other languages, but I'm actively learning Thai right now. So ever since I started learning Thai, have not been actively using Link. Other than for, uh, I've been reading through a novel in Spanish. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, sorry, just reading through some of the comments here. Okay, I think we shouldn't learn the target language with translation stories. Different cultures might have different stories. That's true. Um, the reason I wanted to do these translated stories, like, you know, I translated them into Esperanto, Tokipona, Spanish, German, French. I didn't do it. I got translators to do it. Um, generally speaking, I do prefer to use a story or something that's written in the native language. Um, but with very simple things like this, it doesn't matter that much. Like one of the best, I always talk about this, one of the best tools, one of the best books that I used for learning Thai is called um, Malek Kero. And it's just because it's very simple. This is originally written in English. Um, it's just very simple. It has very simple uh, words and phrases and pictures to go along with them. And it doesn't matter that this was a translation. Like at this level, it doesn't sound that unnatural. Um, for sure, things can start to get weird once you start uh, learning from translations later on, but especially early, it's not gonna make a difference, in my opinion. Oh, here goes my zombie. I crocheted this zombie because my next book is about zombies. It's called Zombie Girlfriend. So be on the lookout for that. All right, Shriram says, uh, yeah, which is also why Link mini stories are so great. So, Gine Havas Multe Esperante. Hmm, Bedaurinde. Um, 
Okay. What do you what do you think about the Michael Thomas method? Never tried it, so I don't have any opinion. Sorry. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to speak sooner. Yeah. So okay. Uh, that. I mean, we got a lot off track, but. Anyways, in my opinion, one of the things that makes Pimsleur so much better than Type Pod 101, going back to the main theme of this this live stream, is that Type Pod is that Pimsleur starts you off uh, saying something right away. You speak it. You use those words. They teach you nouns, verbs. They teach you how to use those nouns and verbs in a phrase, and then they make you use them right away. You use them over and over, and then you keep using them. You slowly, gradually use them less and less, right here. So, for example, I'll give you a good example. They do this in most of their, most of their um, level one courses. They teach you the word for beer, wine, glass, and bottle, right? And then they would say, uh, they'd ask you a question like, "Do you want to drink beer or wine?" And then they just gave you a exposure to the word drink, beer, and wine. Right, and then the response is, "I want to drink beer." So there's another um, exposure to the word beer and and drink. Then they say, "Do you want to drink beer in a glass or in a bottle?" And then you say, "I want to drink beer in a bottle." And then they say, "Do you want to drink beer in a glass?" No, I want to drink beer in a bottle. Right, and you keep using these words over and over. No, I do not want to drink beer in a glass. I want to drink beer in a bottle, right? And then they say, "Do you want to drink wine in a bottle?" You know, and they keep they keep asking, you know, right? And and so there's your other. You get lots of repetitions of drink, and you get repetitions of wine, of glass, beer, bottle, all of these words. You're using them over and over, and in different contexts. And the word want, right? Um, and the conversations can get kind of weird. Like, why is this guy pushing so much alcohol on me? Right. Um, but then they gradually stop to use, stop using it quite as often. Um, right. In the next episode, they might ask you one or two times what you want to drink. Uh, and then they might not ask you again until two or three episodes down the line, but they slowly start to decrease usage of these words. Um, as you progress at getting stronger and stronger at remembering those words, unlike Typepod 101, where they literally list off the vocabulary words in one episode and then never come back to them. Tom Brank Bankson says, what's your opinion on Duolingo? I've done a few video reviews on that. So if you're interested in my opinion, you can go check those out. Um, overall, Duolingo is okay. They have some strong points. Not many, but some. And I recommend Duolingo to people who are just starting their language. Like if you don't know anything about the language yet, give Duolingo a shot. Uh, I don't recommend it for much else than that. You can learn more about my opinion on Duolingo. Just do a Google search for Fingtem Duolingo Review. All right, sorry, just looking through some of the comments here. At 1,000 bot plus for a good, for a bottle of Blossom Hill and a 7-Eleven, I'm definitely not thinking the wine in Thailand. How many language Pimsleur have? Oh, how many languages does Pimsleur have? Quite a few. Oops, let me show you here. Pimsleur, all of these languages. I don't know, what's that? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve times, uh, so eleven times four, forty four, forty six languages looks like so far. Forty, uh, forty seven, I guess. I don't know how they do ESL. Ah, okay, in specific languages. Okay, forty seven languages you can learn. That's pretty good. And each course is made specifically for the language you're learning. All right, they're not cookie cutter, which is exactly what we want. I recommend Pimsleur. It's not the greatest. It's pretty good. And there's different methods. It can be really expensive. For sure, it's not worth a thousand dollars. Unless you're a billionaire and money is not an object. Um, I would not recommend Pimsleur 
the full Pimsleur CV course if you're going to buy it for full, for full for price. Okay. Uh, if you can buy five Pimsleur courses for a hundred bucks, that might be worth it. Okay. Or maybe one Pimsleur course for 19 bucks. Sure. 30, you know, if you can find a good deal on Pimsleur, um, that's worth it. Uh, if you want to pay for Pimsleur premium or Pimsleur audio for $14 a month and use it every single day, that's worth it. Even if you're going to use Pimsleur, you know, three times a week for 14 bucks, that's worth it. I recommend using it every day or almost every day, you know, five days a week, six days a week, something like that. Um, $19 a month, not too bad. I don't know if the flashcards and the other little things are worth the extra $5 a month, but it can't hurt. So that's my opinion on Pimsleur. Um, also, don't expect Pimsleur to bring you to fluency by itself. You got to do other stuff with Pimsleur. All right, is Pimsleur only targeted for English speakers learning foreign foreign languages? Um, Pimsleur is mainly dedicated to English speakers learning foreign languages. Okay, there's also a smaller set of learn English for speakers of Spanish, Russian, Chinese, you know, Mandarin. Um, they do have those, but not as many. Uh, and there is no like learn Spanish from Russian or anything like that, as far as I'm aware. It's learn English or you already speak English and learn one of these other languages. Anyways, I think that's where I'm going to cut the live stream off today. Thanks to everyone who watched. Um, yeah, again, if you are interested in, uh, oops. Again, if you are interested in joining our, our monthly group chat on uh on uh as a pims as a uh patreon patron um we'll be putting that together pretty soon here so if you're interested in our monthly group call over google meets uh you know that would be the b1 uh tier and then we'll just discuss what we're doing in our languages what you're learning how you can do better otherwise if you're looking for a private lesson for me there's other tiers down here uh, depending on what you're looking for. So I appreciate all you guys watching and, uh, I will see you guys soon. Gisla revido. Goodbye. Peace.